welcome to the Essentially You podcast. Marion Stewart, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's been a very busy day and I'm really pleased to be sitting down to have a chat with you. Oh my goodness, me too. I bet it has. I know you've been so, so busy. I'm super excited to have you on today. We're talking about one of my favorite topics. It's definitely an area that I've dug so much into the research. And I just love that we're having a very candid conversation about how to manage menopause naturally. That's what it's all about, right? And because I know that so many women have been, I, I remember I just, I got a message, I got an email from a woman, one of my, someone who follows me or someone listened to the podcast, who had told me that her doctor had given her an antidepressant for her hot flashes. And I was so blown away. She was like, please tell me that there's something I can do to manage this naturally because the antidepressants are really messing with my emotional well being. And I'm so grateful because I get messages like this all the time where women are put on some type of medication for symptoms that I think can be absolutely managed naturally. And I'm sure that you get this a lot too. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, we did a survey on 1,100 women and not only were 96% of them said they were taken by surprise by their menopause and two thirds of them said they felt robbed of life as they knew it, but also 37% of them were given antidepressants and for menopause and over 80% of them said they didn't feel that was appropriate. Mm -hmm. And a whole bunch of them were given, I think it was 41% were given hormone treatment and 14% of those didn't take it. And of the ones who did, 61% came off because of adverse side effects. And I've been helping women for 28 years to manage their menopause naturally. And everything we do is based on published medical research. So I can put my hand on my heart and say that you really don't need to suffer and you just need to learn how to have what I call a midlife refuel. And I'll tell you more about that, but it's just that simple. And it doesn't have to be attached to stigma or shame or anything. This could be a whole new chapter in someone's life as I, I know you're only too aware. Hmm. I am so grateful to you for not only doing this work and serving women for so long, but also, you know, digging into the research and realizing that there is so many better ways to manage this beautiful transition in our life. Now, I know that a lot of women are still feeling, you know, like they don't have a lot of answers when it comes to menopause, that they have just accepted that it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be stressful. It is going to adversely affect their health in a lot of different ways. And I wanted to know kind of in, in all the conversations and interactions you've had with women, especially as they're navigating menopause, why is it that so many of us feel that way and think that way? The point I think we need to understand is that hundred years or so ago, we weren't living much past 50. And so it didn't really matter. There was just no need to even worry about it. But now because no one's telling us, and in fact, the Mayo Clinic survey that was published in 2019 on doctors and gynecologists showed that only 7% of them felt adequately educated to help women going through menopause, which is insane. Nobody tells women that they can do a U-turn at this time in their life. And so they buy into the fact that it's the end of life as they knew it. And it's, they feel sad they mourn the loss of themselves they feel there's some shame and stigma attached to it and probably what goes on below the waist in terms of the fact that our relationship surveys showed that 70 percent of women felt completely switched off and lost their libido and often have vaginal dryness they don't even talk to their best friends about it i think women tend to be paralyzed when they get to this life stage they feel like they're on, on one hand they're too young to be going through menopause. But on the other hand, the harsh reality is that they're up in the night, they can't think straight, they're panicking, aching, their thermometer's gone crazy, and they don't, they just feel like a shadow of their former selves. Mm. I also feel too, as I remember in the 1940s and 50s, when we finally started believing that women were experiencing symptoms in menopause, menopausal symptoms, that we automatically deemed it a condition, that it was a disease state. I remember when my grandmother was growing up and, and when she finally hit menopause, the most prescribed drug at that time was, was Valium, was tranquilizers. That's what they were giving women for menopausal symptoms until they came out with 
Premarin until they came out with a, with a hormone replacement therapy. And then anytime women came into the doctor's office and mentioned any symptom of hormone of, of menopause, they were automatically just given like Premarin. It seems to me that the way that we've navigated menopause in, in the medical system has been very much like this is a condition, it's going downhill for women, here's some drugs, only drugs fix this and send us on our way. And, you know, finally realizing that maybe not all of these things are good for us as women and that we really need to get to the natural co- natural change of things, but that also that we can navigate this transition with so much ease and grace. And I love that idea of that refuel that you talk about, that when we have the right tools and we, we understand what's going on with our bodies, now that we're living into our 80s, 90s, even into our, into our 100, you know, 100 and 510, whatever that may be, that there's there's a different way to shift and look at how we take care of our health and well-being. And so I'm super excited to talk to you about that. Now, I know I want to get into some symptoms, but I would also just love to kick off and ask a little bit about what is a what does a refuel look like? Like how can we just kind of say okay, here I am navigating perimenopause and menopause. I know that my body's shifting. I know that my hormones are changing. How can I start to take care of myself based on these changes? I think the first thing that women need to understand is that very often when you're going through this midlife experience, the chances are that you've got quite significant nutritional deficiencies. So we did five separate studies years ago. I was running an advisory service helping women with PMS. And we looked at five groups of women and we found that between 50 to 80 percent of the women had low levels of things like magnesium, B vitamins, iron, zinc, essential fatty acids, vitamin D, calcium and that kind of thing. And it affects your brain chemistry and hormone function. And the brain chemistry is a bit like the conductor in an orchestra and that it governs everything that goes on in your body. And as you get older, your nutrients become in even further short supply. And so you end up running on what I call economy mode. You're a bit like a bucket with a hole in it, firing on two cylinders instead of four, and it becomes very difficult to feel well. And then in addition to that, you've got empty estrogen receptors. So each cell has a receptor, and when you've got circulating estrogen before menopause, then those receptor sites are satisfied. But when your ovaries pack up, as they do during perimenopause and menopause, and there's no more natural estrogen in your body, those receptor sites are empty and your brain doesn't understand because it wasn't used to you living past 50. And so it's trying to kickstart your ovaries back into function. And that's why women get these thermal surges, the hot flashes, the night sweats. And that's why they feel so bad. And so from our perspective, what what my program does is it teaches women how to have this refuel, how to get their nutrients back into an optimum range. So first, the first thing is detecting nutritional deficiencies. And where do we learn about that? We don't learn about it anywhere in their lives. We're, we're just born, you know, babies are born with millions of eggs, baby girls, but we have no roadmap and we have no manual. And so we have no clue really how to manage or even what a nutritional deficiency might look like. So learning how to detect the nutritional deficiencies on your skin, hair, and your nails, that's the first thing. So I focus on that in the book so people can detect them and then correct them and consume foods that are rich in those nutrients so that they gradually, and maybe take some science-based supplements that get their nutrients back into an optimum range. So that's the first part of it. And then the second part of it is satisfying the needs of the receptor sites. And that's really important because if you have empty estrogen receptor sites, your brain is so hungry for estrogen that you're going to be taking in the environmental estrogen, those harmful xenoestrogens that come in pollution and plastic and toxic, toxic waste and so on. And that can increase your risk of breast cancer. And they are very undesirable. So if you had a race between HRT, let's say, synthetic HRT or natural HRT, Mother Nature's estrogen and also these environmental estrogens, Mother Nature's would win, would jump into the receptor site and seal off the space and fool the brain into thinking that you've got normal circulating estrogen. Because when you look under a microscope at estradiol that you had before menopause, 
and fighter estrogen, the mother nature's estrogen, they look so similar. It's like spot the difference. And so that's how you can fool the brain into thinking that you've got normal circulating estrogen. It's a bit like turning back your biological clock. And the good thing is it doesn't just help your symptoms to be controlled, but it also helps in the long term to prevent things like osteoporosis, heart disease, dementia, and all those things that we're more predisposed to after menopause. So as well as dealing with the what's going on right now in your life and the pain that you may be in or preventing whatever from happening as you go through perimenopause and menopause, you're also learning how to future-proof your health so you can keep yourself in good shape and make longevity a much better experience. Hmm. Now, when it comes to phytoestrogens, are you recommending, because I know it takes a lot of phytoestrogens, not that we can't get them from foods like soy and kidney beans, and you know, there's lots of different flaxseed, there's a lot of different places where we can get phytoestrogens, but is it normally recommended, Marianne, or are you recommending to take a supplement so that we really have enough to fill in those receptor sites? Yeah, what we tend to do, it depends on each individual woman. Mm-hmm. I bet. Uh, we're aiming to get about 100 milligrams of isoflavones, little and often, because the estrogen receptor sites don't stay full for very long. So if you love cooking and you don't mind working out your meal plans so that you've got enough phytoestrogens in your actual menu, little and often, that's fine. But I do tend to recommend a standardized supplement at night, especially in the beginning, because the receptor sites don't really stay full for more than four to six hours. And the chances are you're going to hopefully go to sleep for longer than that in the night. And so you want to take something just before you go to bed to top up with naturally occurring estrogen in the night. And then you can carry on at breakfast and start again the next day. So I have in on chapter four in the book, I focus on supplements and I focus on the supplements that have been through published clinical trials because there are so many supplements out there on the market that literally come in pretty packets, but don't contain what they say on the labels. And the research shows that. In fact, we were asked to recommend a supplement some years ago that was supposedly contained 39 milligrams of isoflavones, but there was an independent analysis that showed that it only contained one. And so I felt quite angry that women invest in products that don't necessarily help them and it's not particularly regulated industry so it's again there's there's such a lot to this life stage and women really need to navigate their way through this transition so that they can get the best value for whatever they invest in Mm, agreed and how about progesterone i find that i mean we so we speak so much about estrogen i know how important that is when we become estrogen deficient in menopause but progesterone i find plays such a big role as well and i know you know for me i i make recommendations in you know especially when it comes to feeling anxious or sleep issues i know progesterone plays a big role in helping to support that are you making any recommendations for kind of what it looks like to supplement you know, in in replacement for progesterone, natural progesterone? No, we don't actually do that because when you correct nutritional deficiencies, it helps your body make more progesterone naturally. And also a lot of the foods that contain natural estrogen also contain some progesterone. And so through, we're finding that, and some of the supplements we use as well help to balance hormones. And it seems to remove the symptoms completely In fact, in my five-month program, which I was running for well over 20-something years, we found the study showed that 91% of the women were symptom-free within the space of five months. And even on the six-week course, we're seeing women's lives radically change and they see a big fat light at the end of the tunnel and that they know they're on the home stretch. So we don't really, uh, I mean, there are all sorts of tests that you can do to measure hormones as well. We don't really use those either for the most part for most people because there are so many things that you can do to make yourself feel better and it's probably better to focus on that and get a quick result. Yeah. I mean, as a practitioner, I still love testing and I love testing the hormones that I'm not necessarily concerned. I'm not, I'm not always concerned with just progesterone and estrogen. I want to know what's going on with insulin. I want to know what's going on with your blood glucose levels, your, your hemoglobin A1C, because I, I know insulin, I always say, you know, the hormone that I really want women to focus on over 40 is insulin. That's the one I think can get us into a lot of trouble if it's out of control. I like to look at cortisol levels, and I also love to look at the thyroid. I want to make sure that your, your high-driving metabolic 
hormone is running. And because I think a lot of what I see is menopause symptoms look a lot like thyroid deficiency. And also, uh, if you've got elevated cortisol, yes. a lot of those symptoms mimic menopause. You can get yes. brain fog, anxiety, belly fat, aches and pains, insomnia, or, you know, it's, and with COVID in the air at the moment, it's it's really difficult for a lot of women who are going through the menopause. So yeah, no, I agree with you, but I think because I think I'm, whereas I did have my clinic in Harley Street in London for many years, for the last three years, I've been working virtually. And I came to live in America and my husband was actually ill and we were in New York for a year and it was just, I just had to find another way of helping women. And I think that some women, I agree, do need to have the tests and I can quite understand if you're seeing people on a one-to-one -one how you want to do that. But I decided that I wanted to try and reach tens of thousands, if not millions of women with some self-help advice and some support. And so we've developed uh, an online virtual system which runs from your phone and it helps so many people to be symptom free that of course they're going to be people that do want to go to clinics like yours and get the tests as well and that's fine and sometimes I send mine to um, labs as well if I'm worried about someone in particular but we tend to manage without those for the most part and that keeps the cost down. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I absolutely agree that you can make changes with or without the labs you know, in, in everyone's case by case. And what I meant by progesterone, because I don't really think you can get progesterone back once you've lost it, unless you are trying to do a bioidentical. I just meant like, I recommend magnesium, glycine, taurine. There's just specific nutrients that I recommend when women take a major hit because progesterone has gone. So I was just curious, because I know we, we focus so much on estrogen, but I feel like progesterone is the, the kind of like the, the stepdaughter <laughs> who we, once we, once she's gone, we really miss her. And so I wanted to just speak into that too, because I, I see so many women who, who do well with nutrient supplementing, especially if they took a major hit on, on losing progesterone levels. Yeah. I mean, there's one of the supplements that we use on our program called Feminescence has been through clinical trials and that's a maca product that's made from organic maca root. And it's been shown in the clinical trials to normalize hormone function so it normalizes the hormone producing glands in the body and it covers all the hormones we've been speaking about so i think that there are different ways of going about this and different things work for different women i was on the phone to a patient today and a supplement that i normally recommend for everybody she's had the most horrendous reaction to it and i've you know she's just not feeling well and i've never heard of that before so there you know there are different things for different people and i think it's really important to recognize that Absolutely. Well, let's talk a little bit about libido. This is definitely an area, vaginal dryness, low libido, you talked about it as well, that just the switch just feels like it just it goes off, right? And what are some of the recommendations that you have found really move the needle for women when they're dealing with either the switch is completely off or the switch is still on and they're just experiencing pretty extreme vaginal dryness and atrophy? Yeah, and I think, again, this is probably about the best kept secret in the world because people are just not speaking about this at all, and yet it's so common. So when, I would say that the majority of women, when they have what I call the midlife refuel and they get themselves back into good shape, they get their nutrients into not to range and their hormones back in balance, very often their libido comes back again. And certainly you can actually get the mucus back in your vagina, and you can restore the tissues as well. And in fact, the first study I ever read was published in the British Medical Journal, and it was an Australian study done at Monash University where they took a group of women and they fed them flax seeds, soy, and red clover. And they brought about a similar change in the lining of the vagina as they would have expected to see in a woman taking hormone replacement therapy. And obviously I pricked my ears up at that point and thought, this is really interesting. And there's been much more research since then. So there are things that you can do. And what we tend to do is recommend that women get their tissues sorted out first of all, so that it's no longer painful. Because sometimes people can literally feel uncomfortable to sit down and they may even get bleeding when they try and have penetration. So it's important to sort out the tissues. And then if libido hasn't come back all by itself, then there are some supplements that you can take that have been through clinical trials that show 
80% improvement or 80% of women say they got their libido back significantly. So lots of things that you can do and you don't have to feel that that part of your life is over because it's far from true. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. Yeah. And I've definitely read about phytoestrogens and red clover. I know that there's some other wonderful supplements that can really help. I know that, you know, I always tell women, you know, worst, worst case scenario, if nothing is working naturally, there's always the ability to do a topical estrogen, bioidentical estrogen, even for a short period of time, if, if nothing else is working. Yeah. There's also laser therapy as well, Yes, which is really, and some really interesting research on that. So women who are really suffering so it, it just depends. I think the first thing to do is try the natural approach for the vast majority of women that works. And then for others, uh, maybe they need a little bit of extra help and then come back to the natural approach yes. once they've done that. Absolutely. And I know that natural DHEA cream can also help too. So there's a cut, there's a lot of different options. I just always want women to know if, if you're feeling like you've got, you've exhausted a lot of the natural options first, and that's still not working and you're in a lot of pain, especially with, when regards to atrophy, there are definitely some other options you can do topically that won't have a massive systemic, you know, massive systemic kind of well, it's not metabolized by the yes. liver, but, Thank but you. I, can, I mean, I remember one of my patients, she described her vagina as a burning fireball Yes. and she couldn't sit down and she was bleeding. And the last thing on her mind was sex. Within three months, she was back to feeling and having a proper relationship with her husband. And it had such a profound effect on her and her self-esteem on everything. And in, in the end, she felt so well, she went off and she retrained and became a healer. And she's helping tons of other women, which is wonderful. And, and still got a very loving and physical relationship with her husband. And that was more than 10 years ago. So I'm, I, I, I do see these amazing things. And I just feel because this is a, a, an embarrassing subject for a lot of people and isn't one that's widely discussed, I think it's important for women to understand that they can get it back again. And it's just a question of... Investing a few months probably in yourself because women are normally very busy. As you know, you've just had a baby that it's all consuming when you have kids and you've got a busy job. And so we tend to be low on our own priority list. And it's not until we get into a painful state that we have to do something for ourselves. So if you can just spend a few months nurturing yourself, learning how to meet your needs and getting this refuel, you'll come out feeling turbocharged and be able to turn the page for a whole new chapter and use your wisdom, put it to good use and do all the things that you want to do in life without being overwhelmed by your symptoms. Mm. So I 100% agree with you there. I absolutely believe 100% that natural solutions, supplementation, food, self-care, all of that plays into feeling so vibrant and really stepping into this next phase of our life. Okay. One of the things I wanted to ask you is what are some of the lesser known symptoms of menopause that you see a lot in your community? I'd say itching and feeling like you've got ants crawling under your skin. (laughs) That was something that I've never seen that particularly widely noted, but a lot of women talk about that. Um, I also, we did a study some years ago now on 500 women and a lot of them put on weight taking hormone replacement therapy and that's not documented particularly well either but they on average they gained 18 pounds within the first 18 months and that could be a really bad situation because very often women put weight on anyway as their metabolism slows down at midlife unless they're and if you don't feel good then you're going to be more more sedentary so you're not going to be out there exercising and doing your stuff So we kind of get them up gradually doing some dancing to their favorite music and just bring them back to life again. So because exercise is really important to stimulate the endorphins and get them feeling their brain oxygenated and speed up their metabolism so that they can lose weight without dieting. So I think that those are probably, I think also people sometimes feel driven to crave chocolate. And I know from, PMS days, very often women crave chocolate before their period. Well, that can carry on into menopause and no one's particularly talking about that, but often women comfort eat because they're feeling so bad and that could be a vicious circle as well because it's not going to do anything for insulin or anything in your body. It's just going to make you feel worse and fat. 
Absolutely. Well, it's tied to insulin. I mean, we are, if we see, if we see insulin having a crashing up and down, it's, it just becomes this rapid roller coaster that kind of feeds into itself. And then one of the things that you had mentioned earlier was, you know, a deregulated cortisol and cortisol's number one job is to regulate insulin. So if you've got a situation where you are constantly running from one thing to the next, you, you've got rushing women's syndrome and you're handling everything for everybody that's going to completely deregulate cortisol, which is going to throw off not only your gut microbiome, but also insulin levels. And it's no wonder we've got these crazy cravings, you know, at multiple times during the day, <laughs> or especially as we navigate into perimenopause and menopause. And so I'm no surprise. I see that you're, you see, you have seen cravings happen. Um, as far as the itching is concerned, I wonder if that has to do with the histamine response, but definitely I've heard about that as well, that women feel like they, they're kind of crawling out of their skin. How often, I'm not sure if you've seen this as well, but how often have you seen women with sleep issues heading into menopause? Oh, unbelievably often. It's so common. And in fact, Julie, who's my assistant, has been working with me for the last four years. When she came to her interview, she didn't tell me that she hadn't slept. Obviously, you didn't, don't talk about that kind of thing at your interview, but she hadn't slept for more than two hours at a stretch for years. And it wasn't until we were developing the first course for women that she came on it, that she realized because she was perimenopause or she didn't have hot flashes or night sweats, she just hadn't slept and she had brain fog. So it wasn't until she actually went through the course to see what it was like because she was working with me that she realized she was perimenopausal. So I, or every single week I encounter women who are having terrible sleep problems, either because the night sweats are waking them up and also because their tissues get thin. And so the bladder and the urethra don't, can't hold on to the urine. And so they're getting up to pee a lot in the night. Again, we can reverse that. We get the tissues all plumped up. We turn off the night sweats. And so we go from maybe some of them who wake up seven times in the night, go to waking up once or not at all. I spoke to somebody yesterday who said, I'm sleeping all night now. And that is a miracle compared to what was happening to me before. And I hear that all the time. And I think, again, that's important that you don't just buy into the fact that you need medication because it's, if you're not sleeping, your body's trying to tell you something as with all of these symptoms. You know, if you've got brain fog, um, anxiety, panic attacks, palpitations, whatever it is, your body is communicating all isn't well. And it's up to us to be able to be detectives to find out what it's lacking so we can actually get it back into good shape again. Mm, I love that. And then the last thing, which I'm sure is very much part of the program and in the book is really addressing a lot of menopause symptoms with diet. Have you found that diet has, has, um, is a major game change for women, especially in menopause? Yes, absolutely. Because we know that nutritional deficiencies, not just our studies, but now there are researchers around the world that have shown that billions of women have got low levels of nutrients. So the first thing is we need to build nutrient levels up back to an optimum range. And we can do that partly through a really good and wholesome diet and include naturally occurring estrogen into that too, so that they're getting everything they need. And it takes probably about 12 weeks or so, 11 or 12 weeks to get the nutrients back into an optimum range. And once you have, then you're going to start to feel like you're firing on your four cylinders again, and your brain starts to work normally and send out the right messages. So diet's really important, but I describe my program like a pie because there isn't a magic, one magic pill. And so what we tend to do is teach people about how to consume a really nutritious diet. And in the beginning, take foods and drinks out of your diet that maybe will impede the absorption of good nutrients, because there are a few of those and to consume naturally occurring estrogen, take the supplements that have been through clinical trials according to your symptom set, and then do some exercise and also relaxation because formal relaxation like meditation or guided meditation, the relaxation that you do at the end of a yoga session has been shown to reduce the hot flashes and night sweats by as much as 50 or 60%. So that's important as well. Yes. And there's lots of other therapies as well, but just depends on each individual woman. But that, that's the kind of core program. It's not rocket science. It's just science that isn't widely known about. And when I just believe that every single woman has the right to this knowledge. 
Absolutely. Well, I think a lot of women are under the impression that hot flashes are only specifically driven by estrogen deficiency. But we know through research, stress drives hot flashes. We know that glass of wine at night can drive hot flashes and night sweats. Sugar spikes, insulin issues can drive nights, um, hot flashes and night sweats as well. And I can imagine that when people, when women really start to look at some of those inflammatory components, especially the, the half a bottle of wine or the sugar or whatever that is, you remove those things and remove those stressors, the body starts to create that equilibrium. I know so often women are even taking bioidenticals and their hot flashes are still not under control. No, we really do get them back into good nutritional shape. But having said that, it's not a life sentence. It doesn't mean that they have to give up all the things they love forever. It's just going on probably what's loosely could be called a modified exclusion diet. But for everything we take out, we suggest two or three other things that are really enjoyable. And the general consensus is that it is enjoyable and women do stick to it. They become self-motivated after a few weeks because they see a huge difference. And it's so important because one in four women is now leaving the workplace. And this age group is the fastest growing sector in the workplace and so important to the economy. And Forbes said in 2019 that it's the cost of lost productivity associated with menopause is $810 billion globally. And that's insane. You know, it's really insane. So we just need, we started working with corporations so that we can help women in the workplace to get back to feeling better and being more productive. And that's going to have a win-win situation. And so I think in the absence of doctors really delivering what they should be doing at the moment, corporations can step in and some women can get help in the workplace. And I think that really does need to happen. Hmm. Absolutely. Well, and so many of us are working from home too. And so a lot of this can be done in the comfort of our own home as well, especially when it comes to diet and lifestyle modifications. So I love that. Marion, I just love, I love that this is such a natural approach that any woman can do, especially when it comes to filling in nutrient gaps, removing inflammatory foods, focusing on the lifestyle and reducing the stress, you know, by bringing in the meditative piece, the relaxation piece, whatever self-care feels really good to, to that particular person at the time. Where can we find your book and tell us what the name of the book is. The book is called Manage Your Menopause Naturally, and it's available, I think, all book retailers and certainly on Amazon. And on my website, there's a midlife refuel club, which we started in January, which provides all sorts of self-help information, tons of free stuff in there. And I do a live session every week. So if someone goes and buys the book and they've got questions, then they can come and get their questions answered. In the book also, I've got recipes and menus and meal plans and for people that want something a bit more sophisticated. And for those who hate cooking, then there's loads of fast options and shopping lists and uh, lists of foods rich in important nutrients. So there's everything in there, including all the, the charts and things that women need to fill in to track and to create their own program as they go through the system. So anybody who's suffering mild to moderately, I think they can manage just with the book, but anybody who wants any extra help they can certainly come to the website and come and talk about how we can give them some extra help and support. Hmm. Well, thank you so much for all the incredible work that you're doing. I love, I love the community. I love the support that you've created for this book. We'll have all the links inside of the show notes for this episode. I just want to say thank you again for not only writing this book, but for creating the programs and the communities to help so many women. Thank you. Thanks very much.